What is up everybody? We are back finally and making more content in another video. Today's episode we are repainting a lucky fishing lure. So we're going to roll the intro and jump right into it. All right, so here is our lucky fishing lure. A TikTok friend of mine sent her over to me, said he's caught a ton of fish on it, and that it is due for a facelift, which I will 100% agree with. So what we're going to do is strip what's left of the original paint, and then we're going to give it as close as we can to the exact same uh, paint pattern on it. So without further ado, let's get started. Here is the stripper we're going to be using. It's a Safer paint varnish stripping gel. Uh, I noticed in my last YouTube video I made about restoring a fishing lure, I did not include the brand, and I forget what your name was, I apologize, but someone had asked me about it. So here it is, making sure to include it in this video. Um, I do not recommend using very harsh strippers because it will potentially melt the plastic on your fishing lure. And what I've done, because I've done this frequently, is I've just put it all into like this old jar and I just set the whole lure down in there. And also make sure if you're messing with any of this stuff, you have proper ventilation and you wear gloves, all that jazz. What we're going to do is go ahead and pop out the other eye that's still in this fishing lure and then dunk this whole thing down in the stripper and let it sit for quite a while. I'll probably grab whatever I have handy. I think I have an old toothbrush around here somewhere that we'll use to get the rest of the paint off of this. And I, was ma I made sure to take some pictures first uh, that way we can replicate this as close as we can. Alright, so this has been sitting in here for a few minutes and what I'm looking for is for that paint to start bubbling up on there. I've got a uh, very dirty old toothbrush. It looks like some of it's starting to come off, but I want it to brush off really easily. So I'm just going to keep checking it. I don't have an exact time for you guys as to how long it is other than uh, when I'm doing this not on camera, I just leave it in there. I'll wait a couple more minutes and then check again. I think with as gentle as this stripper is, it shouldn't harm it to sit in there for a long amount of time, a long period of time. But like I said earlier, if you're using something that's a little harsher, uh, you're going to want to make sure that you don't melt the plastic. So we will, uh, I will come back to you guys once the paint's coming off good and we'll get this bad boy all cleaned up. Okie doke, this has been sitting there for quite a few minutes and some of the paint's starting to come off pretty decently so what we're going to do is go ahead and pull it out, give it a scrub, we'll probably have to put it back in again but as soon, the more paint we can get off the quicker, obviously the better and then uh, we'll just dip it a couple times and do this, repeat the process until she's all clean. And like I said, make sure you're wearing gloves. I'm just like I said, using an old toothbrush. I'm sure like a little wire brush would work too, just make sure you're not scratching it. That red paint comes off easy. All right, so the paint's slowly coming off. You can see there some of that blue. So I'm just gonna wipe it all off, wipe everything off that I can, and then we'll set her back down in there. But yeah, you can see how more of that silver on that belly's come off now, along with a lot of the red came off pretty easily. Uh, blue seems like she's stuck pretty good, but that's all right. So we're going to dip her back in there again, let her soak, and repeat the process till she is good to go. So another thing that you can do is use some really fine sandpaper. I've got some thousand grit. But I'm just going to be doing this on the belly and on the top. I'm going to not do it where the scale pattern is, otherwise you'll sand away that pattern since it's not very deep. And since there's already paint there, and it's going to, unless you took a Zacto knife blade and carved out each one, which is almost not not worth the pain, uh, we are going to lose some of that definition just because there'll still be some paint down in there. Um, but thousand grit, and I'm going to use it on the flat areas just to kind of help speed up the process and rough off some of this stuff. 
And if you had a fishing lure that was, uh, the paint wasn't peeling off as bad, you could probably get away with just roughing it up and giving it a new fresh coat. But since that one, there was chunks of paint missing, it would have kept that detail in there. And we don't want that. All right, well, I'm gonna do a little bit more uh, fine tuning work to this. And then we will go inside and give it a hot soapy bath, followed by uh, an alcohol wipe down, and then probably hit it again with some water just to make sure everything's off there, and we'll start repainting it. But like I said, I'm gonna do just a little bit more scraping, scratching here and there, and then uh, we'll go repaint it from there. Okay, we made it inside. We finished scraping all the paint off the fishing lure. As I had mentioned earlier, I did give it a bath with Dawn soap followed by a uh, wipe down with some alcohol to make sure that all of that stripper is gone. You definitely, definitely wanna make sure it's gone, otherwise your paint will not stick, and that is kind of important. So I'm going to go ahead and start off with a base coat of white, and I'm going to be putting right over here in this corner, yep, right there, the brand of the paint and what color I'm using. Uh, that way, you guys, if you're trying to do the same thing, you can follow along. So let's go ahead and start with the primer of white. Alrighty, we are ready to start adding on our silver. And I don't have a good way of doing an extremely bright chrome silver. The closest thing I can do to that is using like the chrome out of a spray can and I'm concerned that that's not going to uh, adhere well and I don't want to test it on someone else's fishing lure. So we're going to be doing the next closest thing that I know will work and that is a a, like a pearlized silver almost, it's Wicked Silver brand. So I'm gonna clean out the brush and I'll switch over to that color. So we got the whole thing painted in the shiniest silver that I have. And now we're going to switch over to a pearlized blue. And on the original pattern, the blue did not come very far down because we have a black dot right there. So we're just gonna keep the blue right at the top and then at the very top up here. And then what I'm probably going to do is put a stencil pattern over it and spray just a little bit of black on the top just to add a little bit more detail into it. I need to double check my picture and see how far up that blue came on the head. Okay, it didn't. So that is all the blue that we're going to be doing. Whoop, sorry guys. All the blue that we're going to be doing, I'm gonna go ahead and clean out the brush, hit this with a hair dryer, and then we'll switch over to our red for the belly. And then we're actually almost done with it. We gotta do the black dot, add some eyes. And you can see a little bit on this one. I, I don't know if it's from the thinner or just from me trying to clean up the paint. I did lose a little bit of the detail in the, stents, in the scale pattern, but I mean, it's a repaint, so it's not going to be perfect. Uh, but it's going to be darn close enough and it's going to let this lure keep doing its thing and continue being the lucky lure. So let's be back in one second. All right, we got the lure flipped over. We're going to be spraying some opaque red and we're not going to be doing the whole belly because I don't think the original one had it. I think it was just here and here from what I could tell. So we're just going to do it back here and just up on the front lip. Okie dokie. Yeah, this is probably one of the simplest patterns, but very effective, I will say that. So we're gonna switch over to the black now. We're gonna do that dot and add just a little bit of stencil pattern along the back of it. All right, so I've got this stencil pattern, and a lot of people ask me where I get my stencil patterns or where this one came from. This one came from an orange bag from the grocery store. It's like a weird rubbery material, so you gotta be careful you're not stretching it too much because it'll deform uh, the pattern and since I'm doing this on the back it's kind of hard to clamp it so I'm just holding it on the front we're doing just a little bitty bit of pearlized black not much but just enough that you can see a little bit of a stencil pattern and that is all I don't like I said I don't want to go crazy because I don't want to get rid of all that blue, but just enough to add a little bit more of a detail to it. 
All right, so there we go. We've got the black going along the back. It is time to add the kill zone, the bullseye. And we're going to do just that right now. And this is just a piece of card stock that I've used a punch, like a hole punch, and punched a hole in it. And we're going to line it up just like that. I'm actually going to bring it down a little bit. There we go. Boom, baby. Kill zone. Repeat it on the other side. Now we got a kill zone on both sides. Okay, so this bad boy is ready for some eyes and clear coat, so I'm going to get that done, and then we'll take some final shots of it and see what we end up with. Now, so I've had some people ask me what's the point of repainting a fishing lure, and I think it's simply just, the answer to that is simply just because you can. And you know, if it's a lucky fishing lure and the paint's falling off of it, then why not give it a facelift and keep fishing with it? Sure, you can go buy another one in the store, but there's something special about a lure that you've caught a lot of fish with. I'm sure all of us at one point or another have had a fishing lure like that. All right, so here is the fishing lure all done up. We did a clear coat of the Illumini UV and got those bright yellow eyes put on there. It didn't turn out quite as clean as, as I was hoping, but I'm sure the fish won't mind. But all right guys, well thank you so much once again for watching and I will see you guys next time with another YouTube video. Peace.